here we go. Welcome back. Biological age versus chronological age. What's the difference? This is one of my favorite topics, I have to say. So I'm excited that you see me clearly because this is really important. And it's also going to get a little bit technical, which I kind of love because age is just a number. But is your chronological age accurate? Do you actually feel younger than your age or do you feel older than your age? Did you know that there's actually a whole other number that you can calculate besides your chronological age? And it's called your biological age. And it can give you way more information than just the amount of years that you're on this planet. Your age and years, it's just a number. It's your chronological age. But what does that really tell you? Actually, not much. It just lets you know how many birthday candles to put on your cake. But your biological age, now that can give you so much information, a real glimpse under the hood to see where you are with your health. So before we jump in, because I love this episode so much, And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're listening on the podcast, today is a black hoodie day. And of course, my hair looks great. And if you aren't already following us on Instagram or TikTok, what are you waiting for? We're really funny there. We spend a lot of time creating really funny memes and educational stuff. And don't forget to share this with the people that you love so that they can become the game changers in their lives. Anyway, before we go further, you know, I always start with definitions so that we're all on the same page. So the first one, the one you're familiar with, chronological age. Chronological age is basically the number of years you've been alive since your birth. So if you were born in 1972, that makes you around 52 this year, assuming your birthday passed. That's me, by the way. I'm 52. That's it. Your chronological age. Am I 52? Am I 51? I'm one of those. Someone do the math for me, okay? (laughs) I forget my age all the time. But chronological age is a universally accepted way to keep track of your lifetime, right? It's someone that's asked, how old are you? You give them your chronological age. And it's a standard. It makes us easy to understand age groups, decide what, you know, generation you belong to, stages of development, legal boundaries, etc. Chronological age is basically the clock of your life, just keeps ticking away. But it actually doesn't tell you a single thing about your health or your longevity, right? Two people could be 41 years old. It doesn't mean that they run at the same speed or that they lift the same amount of weight or they have the same amount of joint pain. And that's where biological age enters the picture. Unlike how many candles are on your cake, your biological age isn't estimated on how much time passed, but it's a reflection of how your cells are doing on the inside. It's the real age of your body. And it gives you clues about how much damage has been going on in our body. It's like the mileage on a car, right? You have two cars, both produced the same year, but one is really well maintained. It's hardly been driven around. Regular oil changes, tire rotations, few repairs here and there. That will always outperform and outlast the other car that was manufactured in the same year, but that's been driving around for miles and miles and miles, right? So you're starting to understand the difference. And that's how our bodies are. They respond to how they're taken care of. So you can have one person who's 50 chronologically, but when she walks in the room, she radiates the energy of a 30-year-old, right? Thanks to her lifestyle choices. And on the other hand, you can have somebody who is in his 50s and maybe he's been drinking and smoking and eating a certain way. And now he's dealing with health issues usually seen by 70-year-olds. So you're starting to understand the difference. What we hope, what we aspire to, at the very least, is that your biological age matches your chronological age. That means your body is aging appropriately. And if you're 50 and your biological age is 50, awesome. It means your body is aging kind of on target. But of course, it would be really nice if you could strive for a little better. Maybe if the biological age was 40 or 45. That means you're making some pretty good choices with your health. But on a more serious note, if you're 50 and you have a higher biological age, it's 65, it's 70, that might be the wake-up call that you need. Your body telling you, hey, there's been a lot of damage here, and I'm aging more rapidly than I need to be. So that brings us to the question, how do I know what my biological age is? And there are different approaches, different formulas, but I'm going to give you a sense of what's involved. And as I start talking about this list, it's a really long list, and some of it is a little technical, I want you to start thinking, which of these things are you really on point on? And which of these things can you start making a change? And when you start seeing more things on the, hmm, I need to improve this, start thinking that your biological age is not where you think it might be. So of course, we start with vital signs, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your respiratory. Is your blood pressure high? Are you on meds? That's an issue, right? Is your respiratory rate high as soon as you go up the stairs? Is it, you know, you're out of breath all the time? How's your skin looking? 
you know, neurologically, how are your reflexes? Are you quick to respond to things or are things slow? How's your sensory perception? How's your peripheral vision happening? Your lab test, how's your cholesterol? How's your triglycerides, your blood glucose, inflammatory markers? How's your something called CRP? How's your ESR? These are inflammatory markers. Um, how's your white blood cell count? Your liver, is it elevated? Are your enzymes elevated? How's your kidney function? Is it performing as it should be? Your hormones. And of course, you know me by now, I don't just mean the sex hormones. How's your thyroid hormones? Your T3, your T4. How's your insulin levels? Your body mass index. And when I say body mass index, I very much recognize that the BMI has some issues. So we're going to start with BMI, but then how's the waist to hip ratio? Because that's a really important uh, understanding of weight. DEXA scan, how are your bones doing? Then there's some genetic tests as well, some genetic variants that can identify risks like APOE. How are you functioning? How's your strength? What's your grip strength like? Do you, can you balance? How much can you do on one leg? Are you coordinated? And then we're going to take a look at lifestyle. What are you eating? Are you still eating the standard American diet? Well, how much are you moving? How often do you move? How hard and how intensely do you move? How do you sleep? Are you getting seven to nine hours of sleep? What's your stress level? Is it out of control? What about smoking and alcohol consumption? Where is that for you? Where's your psychological well-being? Because you know everything might look on point, but if you're really you know, dealing with anxiety, depression, a lot of stress, that's affecting you as well. And cognitive function tests. How good is your memory? How good is your recall? This is a huge one. How much can you endure? Right? And at what resistance? Like, can you carry a bag of groceries to your car? Maybe. Can you carry two? Can you carry them up the stairs? How many stairs? How fast can you carry? Can you carry double the load? Can you do it climbing a hill? These are the type of questions for endurance. And you can start seeing that as I'm ticking these off, you might be like, hmm, how are my hormones doing? Do I have inflammatory? Can I carry this bag of groceries up a hill without getting winded? I'm not sure. And this is how you start figuring out your biological age. There are also two really specific tests that are called longevity predictors. And I want to talk about them a little bit. And yes, it's a little technical, so double speed is fine. For those of you who like for me to geek out, here we are. The first one's called DNA methylation. So DNA methylation is a special test, and it looks at tiny changes in your genes. So genes are like an instructions of telling your body how to work. And this test, it checks your genes to see if there's any methyl groups. Think of it as like little stickers. And wherever these stickers are on your genes, it tells us a lot about your health. It tells if certain genes are turned on or off, like certain disease genes. Are they on? Are they off? It also tells us if your body is responding to certain things in the environment, have toxins or other things in your environment turn certain things on, your diet, your lifestyle, the air you breathe. And so by looking at how many of these stickers, how much methylation is happening, we could figure out our biological age. The second test is something called telomeres. Those telomeres, so if you think of your, your DNA strands as shoelaces, and you know at the end of the shoelaces, there's like these plastic caps to make sure that it doesn't get frayed. Those are your telomeres. And these are the protective caps on your DNA strands. And they protect the DNA. And as we age, and every time we use it, that little plastic thing at the end, the cap gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But we really need it to protect our DNA. The longer our telomeres are, the better off we are in terms of aging. So measuring that is also important. The point is, I think you're beginning to understand that biological age is way more complicated than counting candles on a cake. So then the next question is, what things influence our biological age? Like, how, how do we know, how do we fix the age on a cellular level? Because so many of my patients, so many of you listening right now are dealing with certain issues and aches and pains. And you say to yourself, is this really a normal part of aging? And the answer is, it doesn't have to be, okay? We all know you can't change your chronological age. But there are so many things that you can do that are affecting your biological age. And if we can affect it in the right way, we could feel amazing. So what are the things that affect it in the wrong way? At the top of the list is inflammation. And I pretty much talk about inflammation every single week. Inflammation in the belly, inflammation in your brain, inflammation in your joints. Inflammation, today I'm letting you know that inflammation is aging you. And if you're not on top of the inflammation game, you're not on top of the anti-aging game. And of course, what I'm talking about is chronic inflammation, not like acute inflammation when you cut yourself. Chronic inflammation is a slow level, constant fire in your system that just wreaks havoc on your body. 
And how does inflammation influence our biological age? Well, when inflammation is there and it's chronic, it's a constant emergency call to the immune system. It's a constant draining of the immune system and starts to wear and tear on your body's cellular machinery because it has to constantly put out fires. It's like it's like having your engine running nonstop. It's going to wear out sooner than it needs to. The second thing, so we talk about inflammation, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about and introduce to you is something called oxidation. Oxidation is another critical player in the aging process. And I want you to think of oxidation like car rusting over time. So our form of rusting is oxidation, kind of like an apple that turns brown when it's left out in the open. This is oxidation. So we don't want that necessarily happening in our cells. So we have these things in our body, these really enthusiastic molecules called free radicals. And they're pretty much troublemakers. And they're always looking for a fight. They're constantly trying to steal an electron. And they damage cells every time they steal an electron from another molecule. This process of stealing electrons is called oxidation. And when it happens, it damages our cell, speeds up the aging process. The more oxidative damage we have, the older our biological age becomes compared to our chronological age. So too many free radicals in our bodies causes too much oxidation, makes us age quicker. This is why we need antioxidants, which we'll get to in the solution part, because you know I always try to give you guys tips. So we talked about inflammation, we talked about oxidation. Now to continue the rhyme, we're going to talk about glycation which is another part of biological age. And it's something you may not have heard of, but glycation, it's a process where the sugar in your bloodstream attaches to proteins and forms these molecules, which are called advanced glycation end products. And the short acronym of that is AGES, which is kind of appropriate. So the more sugar you consume, the more AGES you produce. And as these ages accumulate, they damage the surrounding proteins. And some of the most vulnerable proteins are your collagen, your elastin. That's the thing that makes you look good, your skin elastic. So you really don't want these proteins to get damaged. So age affects our skin, but of course it also affects our internal workings, our muscles, our blood vessels, our major organ. They alter the normal behavior of cells. So with that, inflammation, oxidation, glycation. And in case you thought I was done with my rhymes, we're now up to radiation. And radiation, we hear radiation, you know, a lot of times you think radiation, oh my God, like, I don't know, a nuclear power plant or something. But the reality is that we live in a world where radiation is part of our daily lives. And not all of it is bad, and it all depends on how much, but, you know, sunlight is a form of radiation. But of course, it's also in our food, in our air, in our electronics, in our medical tests, right? Every time you run to get a CT scan or an x-ray, that's radiation. And when our cells are exposed to radiation, to ionizing radiation, it can harm our DNA. Now, to a certain extent, we can handle some of it and we can kind of overcome some of it. But if we have a constant barrage of it, it accumulates, the damage accumulates. So, and as you can imagine, more and more of it keeps piling up, right? Because it's part of our jobs. It's part of what we do. We're constantly exposed to it. So this is affecting your biological age. And I think lastly, we have to talk about environmental toxins. Now, when you talk about environmental toxins, you might think, okay, factory and smoke, and that's kind of an obvious environmental toxin. But there are so many toxins around us, even if we don't have a big smoke stack around, car exhaust, secondhand smoke, cleaning chemicals in your house. And, you know, it's all around us. And sometimes we're not even recognizing it because it's things that we use on the daily. Because when you have toxins in your bathroom, right, your creams that you use, the hairsprays, the gels. I know I shouldn't talk about gel when I have hair that looks like this, but it's all there. Because you basically, you have your cells and they are basically, you know, these batteries that they are powering our bodies. And when our batteries are constantly exposed to toxins, they drain a little faster than they need to. So you really want to make sure that you're aware of the toxins. So now we got through all the rhyming things. Now we know what's affecting our biological age. How do we start managing our biological age? How do we manage all these assaults on our bodies? So the first thing we have to talk about is tackling inflammation. And basically, if you've been watching this, I keep telling you over and over again how to tackle inflammation, right? You have to find the source and remove it. Number one, anti-inflammatory diet. If you're still eating the standard American diet, you're not even playing the game. You're not even in the game. Like you just got to start there. Just put, press pause, go fix your diet, your nutrition, and then come back and don't worry about the rest. Number two, you have to get to know your probiotics and your prebiotics. You have to get on that game, manage your stress, move, sleep. I'm not spending time on these because I talk about them every single week, but they're there. 
But now we're going to talk about those big words. So we talked about inflammation, oxidation. You're going to stop oxidation with antioxidants. Right? Remember, we talked about that rust and the formation in the car. Now you're going to want to talk about how to stop that rusting with antioxidants. They're basically molecules that slow down or prevent oxidation, which basically means they slow down the aging process. Now, we have a built-in defense system with natural antioxidants in our body. We have it all the time and we use it all the time. But we can help our body along and give it a boost by eating the foods that are rich in antioxidants. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, nuts, leafy green vegetables, dark chocolate, everyone's favorite antioxidant, okay? And if you want to supplement the number one antioxidant, I just did a TikTok on this, is glutathione. End of story pick it up, your body will thank you. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. In terms of glycation, remember glycation is a natural process. It happens in our body when we eat sugars. So how do we resolve that? Of course, you want to cut back on your high sugar foods. That means your sweets, your sodas, anything that's loaded with sugars. But glycation isn't only about giving up sweets. You can also do it by increasing your exercise because it helps break down the glucose so it's not sticking around so much. But believe it or not, when we're talking about glycation, how you cook your food also affects the amount of ages in your food. Grilling, frying, or baking actually increases ages. So whenever possible, if it tastes good, consider boiling or steaming your food to keep glycation low. With radiation, you want to really try to minimize. Keep the gadgets off of your body. Don't sleep with a phone on top of you or under your head. Don't put it in your bra strap. It's not a good place to hold your cell phone, okay? Try to use speaker phones when possible or wired headphones, not wireless headphones. There is such a thing called a Wi-Fi timer. So when you're sleeping, the Wi-Fi can shut down. So that's sort of just less traveling in your house. And also switching to airplane mode whenever possible makes all that stop. Of course, reducing your exposure to environmental toxins. We kind of know there's some things we cannot control out there. But start looking in your bathroom, right? What are the things that you're putting on your skin? If it's full of toxins, it's still going in your system from your favorite body lotion to your favorite toothpaste. Take a look at them. See if you can recognize some ingredients. See if that can help out. Also, artificial fragrances around your home. If you're somebody who's putting plug-in scents everywhere, it's time for a change. Think there are some special candles made with essential oils that smell great but are also not toxic. So take a look at those. And as always, I finish with some supplements because you know I'm going to say supplements are not everything. They're not, you know, the cure-all. But as part of this process, to add this to your life, I highly recommend. So number one, glutathione. It's magical. Your body produces it, but not enough. So it's great to add it. Just take more. Resveratrol. Again, a naturally occurring compound. It's found in red grapes and other plants. But it not only does it have antioxidant properties, which is pretty awesome, but it also has some pretty other awesome anti-aging effects because it helps the mitochondria. Don't want to get too much into that, but it's a good one. In order to stop glycation, we're going to talk about ALA, alpha lipoic acid. Get that in your on your supplement list. And when we're talking about telomeres, good old-fashioned vitamin D. Vitamin D is helps with those protective caps that we talked about. So vitamin D has so many benefits, but especially here when we're talking about anti-aging, it helps telomeres. And of course, it's anti-inflammatory. So if you're not on your vitamin D game, get on it. And when we talked about methylation, we want to use supplements that methylate your B12, your folate, your SAMI, get in there. And for inflammation, all of the above that I just listed, as well as omega-3s, because they are amazing. So recap, by the way, if you haven't gone on iPhone and tried to send a GIF or a GIF, however you want to pronounce it, by typing in the word recap, you should do it right now because my face shows up and it's crazy. And every time it happens, I'm amazed. Anyway, recapping. While we can't change our birth date, the chronological age, we do have massive control over our biological age. And this is amazing news. It means that you're not just at the mercy of time. By making smart decisions about your health, what you put into your bodies, what you don't put into your bodies, how we move, how we sleep, we can contribute to our biological clock. And of course, if you want to work with me and my team, we're at the new method everywhere and new is spelled with a K. Why? Because you always knew there was a better way. I hope this helps. I'll talk to you soon.